Eric Ten Hag sporadically has let it be known that his Manchester United tenure thus far has seen an unexpected level of successes. And those comments have usually come at times where talk of his departure would increase tenfold. Is there truth to those comments or is he missing the point? The United Twins need to speak about this. Leading up to Manchester United's game against Liverpool before the international break, Eric Ten Hag did a short interview with Sky and I believe BBC and was asked about how he views the progress made in his tenure, to which he responded by saying with setbacks included, both his first and second seasons have been successes. The main transcript called into question was the behind City we've won the most trophies in English football. Those trophies being the Carabao Cup in season one and the FA Cup last season defeating Manchester City, of course. I cannot forget also that United lost the FA Cup final in 2023. So three finals in two seasons. And that is what Eric Ten Hag measures his success by in front of the media. And he does it in a rather bullish manner. As far as I remember, we over here have, have been delighted in, in, the, in the midst of those celebrations but I've also emphasised the importance of not being totally lost in those victorious moments. Last season, just winning the cup alone created a lot of division, a lot of confusion on where the club and Ineos in particular should have stood when it came to the position of Eric Ten Hag. If you remember, before the FA Cup final even kicked off, talk of Ten Hag's fate already being decided spread like wildfire, even snuck into press conferences and the post-match interview with the BBC was one of those turning point moments I feel on how many fans evaluated what they wanted. A section of the crowd who now were adamant that there would be no better option to continue leading this team into the future than Eric Ten Hag. After the 3-0 Liverpool defeat and, and you can go look at our reactions and raw opinions after this video. But after that tough result and, and performance, Ten Hag got into a heated exchange with a journalist who was outlining what perhaps had gone wrong. Repetitions of errors, for example, and, and that line came up again in defence. But this time it, it did seem more personal and perhaps in the heat of the moment also. And, and that is what has stemmed the divisive chatter around whether it's time to move on once again. I, I've seen a lot of frustration I, for one, was also frustrated after the Liverpool game. I think that's a natural reaction because I, I think as much as Eric has a point on face value, he also misses an important point, which is the lack of consistency his team has displayed. Wanting to see a Manchester United side play with a level of efficiency and effectiveness in their style of play. Being able to successfully stifle any level of opponent because they've meticulously worked on those things in the training ground and film room. Players and staff holding each other accountable through performances instead of spoken words. Those are just a handful of things. So where does that leave us for, for when club football returns next week and onwards? Because I can see a future where our current manager implodes due to the comments and he makes occasionally. Those reactions will only intensify if results don't go our way. Yes, and I, I will throw this spanner in the works. Uh, One could argue that the first two games of the season, despite of Brighton showcase positives that may blossom with fortuitous events working for us and not against us. Having a lack of injuries would be a great start, for example, but that's not a given. Hey. A lot of focus and expectations have been placed upon the shoulders of Manuel Ogate, who will be called upon to be a high motor, disruptive defensive midfielder. But there still will need to be a period of adaptation. And like what CM said in a match reaction, not one man could have healed what was a broken performance against Liverpool. But he can help to create a small shift, but everyone has to buy into that, including the manager and coaching staff. What have you learned across the first two seasons, the first three games of this campaign, and, and now how will you adjust to accentuate the strengths of each, each individual? And then as a collective, how will everyone collaborate on and off the field to create an environment of consistent growth, which transitions into success? Mm. 
On Thursday, it was revealed that on an interim basis, Sam Erif joined the club and will work as a performance director, which is another step by Ineos to work on the environmental issues that have plagued Manchester United teams of the last several years. Our previous video a while back on the theory of change relates to this. The link will be in the description, but ultimately, moves like this for someone who has worked in elite institutions like England, Manchester City, and performance and sports science positions will bring a level of knowledge that could contribute to change and that's always a good thing because change provides answers that stagnation hides away no doubt about it starting with Southampton the next run of fixtures will be important for Eric Ten Hag to somewhat silence to chatter or doubts around his leadership with this Manchester United team Will things continue to go from bad to worse? We hope not, but there is also a reality where that does happen and then questions will linger close by on whether he departs or will the club remain committed to helping the Dutchman create an elite team that can compete for cups and league titles perennially. Have your say in the comment section 22s and as always hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time, we'll see you lot soon. Bit.